Hey guys, I'm Jared Hughes. I'm a snowboard cross athlete, and this is my snowboard.com interview. Check it out right now, right here, right here, here. <laughs> Oh jeez. You're on. Yeah, the uh, training regime for snowboarding in general is pretty rough. I mean, we get a lot of time on snow, which isn't too bad, but when we're not on snow, especially being from Australia, we don't have the longest season. So when we uh, aren't on snow, I'll get in the gym pretty hard, maybe like two, three times a day, five to, five to six days a week, depends on how tired I am. And yeah, try and, try and get them gains. Yeah, being from Australia, we actually probably get more time on snow than most countries. I, I'd probably say I'm a little different, considering I've had uh, five knee surgeries. I haven't really been able to take advantage of the Australian season too much. Even this season, I think I got a week on snow, but I was really lucky that I got the blizzard of Oz. So that was uh, a nice little wake up call and get a nice little power sesh. My favourite mountain of all time, oh, it's probably Mammoth Mountain. It's been a while since I've been there. I think the last time I was there, I was on a Mammoth camp with Peter Baff for the Fast Ride Tour. Yeah, I think it has everything. And in the last few years, it's you're pretty hard done by to not see it in the news for having epic snow, epic park. And I think it's pretty overall an epic mountain. But I haven't been to Whistler yet, and I'm going to tick that one off this season. So we'll see. Whistler might take the cake, but see what happens. Winning X Games was massive. That really added a huge bonus to my confidence. Uh, and I think just being a little bit older, a little more mature, being 22 now, it's a little different than the fresh-faced 18-year-old at, at the Olympics. But uh, yeah, I, I think I've learned a lot. A lot of stuff's happened in between, but you know, it's that's life. As you get older, you get more mature. So see how we go at 2018. Oh, staying pumped. It's not hard when you're snowboarding. It's, uh, it's a fun job. But if you're not pumped, I don't think you should really be snowboarding. I think uh, the hard part's managing the nerves, if you really want to manage them. They're, they're tough to conquer, and when you can, great stuff happens. I think it, it's all what you make of it, but getting pumped is not a problem for uh, getting on snow and strapping in a snowboard, that's for sure. I definitely love a bit of T-Swift. Taylor Swift's uh, my girl. I mean, what else can you say? Music gun, she's hot. <laughs> what else do you need to worry about? Jeez, top five. Let me just go to my most played. Let's just, <laughs> let's just sort this one out, shall we? We got, like, you gotta love a bit of red. That's a fun one. I think uh, Shake It Off, that's always gun. I mean, it always sticks into your lifestyle pretty well. I mean, you gotta always shake off some haters. Um, her new songs, Ready For It, they're pretty good. I think you gotta really go for the uh, old school, maybe a story of us or something, a bit of fun, but uh, there's, a, there's a new album dropping soon, so we'll see what the rest of this Reputation album sounds like. Uh, I think there's some people that definitely wanna take their time preparing for the Olympics and don't wanna take the risk of getting injured at any event, but I think being at X Games is a huge honour. I think if you're not going to turn up because it's an Olympic year, you probably shouldn't be back the next year either. I don't think you should be invited, which uh, stands for a lot. And I think X Games did that at the last Olympics. If you didn't turn up that year, the next year you weren't getting an invite, which I, I really respect X Games for doing that. And I think the athletes that didn't go suffered. And I think it looked poorly on snowboarding as well. I think uh, you should be happy to be snowboarding, first of all, and be at a massive event like X Games, and two weeks to get to the Olympics isn't sort of tough turnover. So uh, yeah, I think if you're at the event, enjoy it, and it's gonna be fun. But uh, I, I think there's definitely some people you're gonna see skipping it. I know at the last Olympics, there were some people that didn't even do one World Cup in the lead up, which, and it showed poorly on their results, so. I think if you're not snowboarding in the lead up to an event, I don't think you're going to be doing too well at the game, so get that time on snow and enjoy the events. X Games was the one I always dreamed of winning. I remember sitting at the, I think it was like the 2010 Olympics, I was sitting there with 
bunch of the guys and I asked this exact question and I actually answered X Games pretty confidently. But uh, I think now that I'm in the stage where I've won X Games and being able to say that at 22 is pretty crazy for me. I think that was a major bucket list item that I always wanted to tick off. Olympics means more to Australian sport. Culturally, for snowboarding, X Games means more. Within snowboarding, X Games is the pinnacle. For me personally, I'll put them on the same pedestal. They're both huge. I think the main guys, you're definitely looking at Pierre Voltier. He won everything last season, I think, including world champs. He won 2014 Olympics. He's killing it. Uh, he's going to be a major threat going towards the Olympics. Seth Westcott, he's, he's the dark horse. I mean, he knows how to turn it on when he wants. He, he'll turn up at an event and everyone will just write him off and there he is at the top of the pedestal at the end of the day. Um, Nate Holland is probably the biggest threat for the Olympics itself. They, he won the test event, which was huge. But I think the US team in general, I think they, they had four of the top six guys at the test event, so US team biggest team to beat for sure. My biggest idol within border cross was Seth Westcott and I was really fortunate that when I got on World Cup he really took me under his wing and showed me a lot about the sport and how to ride and nowadays we joke around on the course and stuff and we'll race and in the middle of a race we're you know bickering at each other giving it a little crap. I mean we came around uh, in solitude last year and we come around this turn and he's just like I'm coming for you little shit. <laughs> and I'm just like, you're not gonna get me, old man. <laughs> and it's just like, we get to the bottom, we're just hugging, laughing, and we're just like, you know, having a bit of banter about it all. And it's really cool being out to race your idol. And a lot of people always said, don't, don't meet your idols. And for some people, that's true. And I was very fortunate that I got to meet Seth, and he was even better in person than he was as an idol. So, yeah. Yeah, look, five knee surgeries is a lot. <laughs> Don't recommend that to anybody. I think a lot of people are surprised when I say I'm 22 and I've had five knee surgeries. It's um, a big deal and I don't take it lightly at all. It's a massive thing that's, it's gonna hinder me for the rest of my life after I stop snowboarding when I'm a bit older. I think massively it's a huge thing more mentally than physically being able to overcome that injury itself but that's why we train so hard in the gym. And I think that's why it takes so much time to really be fit and strong going into a season because my knee is a, is a problem for sure. And uh, I've got to be able to stand at the top of the gates and be able to say I put everything in the tank to stand at the top of the podium at the end of the day. And if I don't do that, I don't think I can mentally be prepared to overcome. And I think that's why I've been able to overcome the five knee surgeries is when it's off season and I'm recovering from a knee surgery, I put everything into it. And I'm really fortunate that I've got such a great family that really support me through all that. Gym, friends, beach, video games. When I'm overseas, TV shows, Netflix a lifesaver. Stranger Things comes out, I'm really excited for that. Anything sci-fi, you know, love a bit of Marvel, love a bit of uh, Avengers. Uh, DC have a lot of great TV shows out of the moment. Worst oh shit moment. Um, probably the first time I blew my knee. Came, it was at Russia for the test event. It was 2013 season. I came around this turn and there was this massive drop after it and I just had a brain fart moment. Decided to just ride off it and it's like this you could make it like a 30 foot drop, but it went for like 120 feet. And I ended up, I think, I swear I went like 100 feet and landed at the bottom of the thing. But midway through, you know, like time slows down. You're like, I've gotten way too many window washes going on here. Oh shit, oh shit. And like when you can actually like think to yourself and talk, you're like, that's a bad moment. <laughs> Oh, there's no sabotage, there's a few pranks here and there. I mean, we make a few bets with, within the team, you know, with uh, qualifying and racing and stuff. I mean, I've lost a few, I've won a few, which is great. We had like some spray tan bets where you got to get really bad spray tan. I had uh, 
pro, I lost one where it's like you had to beat your bib in qualifying. And it was really bad because I had like bib two. So it was like I had to qualify in the top two. And uh, I got, I had to get sprayed. But so it was like, I had to take all my kit off at the bottom of the hill. And it was not fun getting drenched by Seth Westcott just standing there, just taking it. Yeah. Just like, just give it to me. And it's just like standing there with all your gear and then you're just drenched wet for the rest of the day. But you know, it's all part of the fun. You got to enjoy a bit of time with the mates. Been on the tour for like six, seven years now and I'm still a rookie, according to some people. I'll sit there, I'm like, how the hell do I get out of this rookie phase? But the, I think I'm just stuck there for life at the moment. I don't know, there's a lot of fun between it. It's a lot of banter, so you just gotta enjoy it. And, you know, welcome to World Cup. <sighs> Favorite movie of all time is a tough one. Anything Marvel or DC, I think we just saw Thor Ragnarok, that was pretty good. So, throw that one in there. Oh, it's hard to go past Art of Flight. I think that's probably the best snowboard movie of all time. I don't think uh, Travis himself has been able to make a better movie than that. Oh, favorite junk food on a cheat day. Burgers are really good. Pizzas are really good. Ice cream's fantastic. Chocolate's good. Any type of sweet will get me going, but uh, you know, a bit of temptation, you've got to avoid it every now and then. Uh, mini shredders that will just want to, you know, be pro snowboarders when they grow up. Like, just go have fun, go snowboard, go enjoy it. There's definitely worse things you could be doing with your time than getting on a snowboard. And uh, yeah, enjoy the journey, because you only get to live it once. So go snowboard, do everything. Don't try and specialise, go ride jumps, go ride pipe, go do everything because when you get on snow and you want to ride everything and you don't want to be stuck doing one thing. Awesome, amazing, best movie production company ever. <laughs> lamp, I love lamp. <laughs> Are you just saying things and looking at them and saying you love them? No, I, I love lamp. Used to be hot. <laughs> Having fun, snowboarding. Babe. Friends, snowboarders, who cares? Go ride. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> Wish I could do. <laughs> Crazy, next level won't be trying anytime soon. Fun, cross training and uh, awesome. Damn, we're out. <laughs>